The Constant is a Terraria seed introduced in the Don't Stab Together crossover update. In this seed, the player will have a hunger system, cave generation will be full of spiders, and standing in the dark will insta-kill you. Knowing all of this, me and my friend Silver thought we'd try and beat it. You can guess how this went. Apart from starting with a legendary copper pickaxe and a broken axe, everything seemed quite normal. Almost immediately, we both had our first deaths. Mine of which was to Cacti. Did I mention that Cacti also deal damage now, because it does. The first night was spent fending off wall creepers right next to our base who decided it was a good idea to nest there. The amount of times we died literally created a graveyard biome, so we also had ghosts to deal with. After equipping ourselves a little better, we started working on a simple little base. Although we wanted to make this look pretty, fighting and killing the Eye of Cthulhu was much more important. So instead, we decided to head underground to see if we could find some more life crystals. And if we got lucky, maybe a suspicious looking eye. We did get lucky, so that night, we built a quick arena and fought the Eye of Cthulhu. Nice. Next, it was time to head to the corruption. Our next goal was the Eater of Worlds, which as you know, can only be summoned by destroying three shadow orbs in the underground corruption. Before we started smashing them though, we needed another arena. We built this just by hollowing out an area with bombs and building a couple of platforms. Now, I'm 90% sure this is not the case, but does this seed make this boss harder or change it? Because we found this really difficult. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. After three flaming attempts at killing this boss, Silver managed to kill it. Somehow I died about nine times. I don't even know why it was so hard. Back at base, we had a meteorite that landed, which was nice because it would start to make me feel a bit more powerful if I had a space gun. So I went straight to that, mined it and crafted some gear. Now that we had the ability to shoot a space gun forever, we thought we were ready for the next boss, Skeletron. So we headed to the dungeon and gave it a go. We hadn't actually built an arena yet, so we really had to build as quick as we could because we were running out of night time. Eventually, we were ready to go. Yep, we died. So we waited another night and gave it another go. Now that Skeletron was dead, we could enter the dungeon and get some pretty good stuff. I also managed to get the Book of Skulls from the treasure bag, which you don't see every day. 
The dungeon is easily one of the most annoying but most rewarding parts of the whole game. As our next boss was going to be Deoclops, which is the new one, we wanted to make sure we had a Cobalt Shield before fighting it. While we were down there, we also managed to find the Goblin Tinkerer, which meant we could buy rocket boots and reforge our items. Further in the dungeon, we started to find our first golden chests. The first one had a legendary Muramasa in it and some other useful items. Back on the surface, I began working on some housing to try and get the Goblin Tinkerer to move in. However, a Queen Bee just decided to spawn and absolutely destroy us both for no reason. Shortly after this encounter, the Goblin Tinkerer did move in, so I spent five and a half years trying to reforge my gear so we were more prepared for the next boss. In order for us to summon the new boss to Eclops, we needed its summoning item. Using three flink fur, one lens and five demonite ore, we were able to craft this at an altar. We then started to head to the snow biome so we could build yet another arena and have a crack at killing the new boss. As this was a boss we'd only killed so far using overpowered gear, we really didn't know what to expect, so we made all the preparations we could expecting the worst. But this is how it went. Surprisingly, my handgun and Silver's mini shark made easy work of this boss. My spoils included a pneumatic horn, bone helm, and many other interesting items. As I had made two summoners, I thought we might as well just do another for good measure. This time around, I managed to get a Houndius Shootius, which is some kind of sentry, which I think is quite cool because this is the only early game sentry you can get that isn't from the Old One's Army event. Back at base, we were kind of lost for things to do, so we thought, you know what, let's dig a elevator and give the wall of flesh a go. You've probably seen someone digging a elevator over a thousand times, so we're just going to skip this part out. Now that we had made it to hell, we had three things to do. Open shadow chests like this one, build a hell bridge, and find a voodoo demon so we could summon the wall of flesh. To be extra secure, we also mined some hellstone so we craft some molten armour. Miraculously, a voodoo demon actually spawned pretty quick, which isn't usually the case when you're trying to find one. With final preparations made, it was time to fight the wall of flesh. After absolutely nailing a throw of the voodoo doll, Silver tried instead, with a little more success. With the wall of flesh now dead and the weld into hard mode, we had a lot to do. Beginning with mining some altars, so our weld was blessed with hard mode ores. Like the pro Terraria players we are, we get through this pretty quickly by just skipping each progression and crafting the pickaxe. Now that we had our adamantite armor obtained, all we needed was some better weaponry. I got my hands on a crystal storm, whereas Silver managed to get her hands on an onyx blaster. While we were farming, a hallowed mimic spawned, which I managed to clutch the kill on. Back at base, we had some final preparations to make before we could defeat the mechanical bosses. 
This included getting us a pair of wings by killing a wyvern. We also had to expand our arena because it was nowhere near large enough for the mechanical bosses. This is the point when we realised that all our torches had gone out. This must be another feature of the seed. And then, just before I was about to spawn Skeletron Prime, this happened. Although I'd love to show you the fight, this is where part 1 ends. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching and please leave a like if you enjoyed. Also consider subscribing if you're new. Thanks for watching and goodbye.